You just met with the Armenian uh, president, I think an hour ago or two hours ago, and uh, it seems to me you had a pretty lengthy discussion with him. And if, uh, what did you talk about? Is there any solution for Armenia? Is there any middle ground for the country, for Armenia? Or this is over? It, it is not over. It is not over. And we definitely have not given up on Armenia. We have definitely not given up on Armenian people. That's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, first, uh, we talk about uh, what has happened and the decision of the president concerning the customs union. And I assured him uh, uh, that uh, uh, exactly what we want others to do to re respect uh, the free choice by our partners, uh, uh, that uh, we respect that free choice too. That, that's obvious. I mean, we cannot yeah. sort of ex expect or, or tell the neighbors of our neighbors to do something and then act differently. Um, we have talked a little bit about, uh, about the past and, and uh, the negotiations and trust and, and, and confidence. Uh, but even more importantly, we have been talking about uh, how we could uh, build uh, on what we have achieved uh, uh, in those uh, years of cooperation, mm. what we have achieved in those uh, negotiations, uh, and build uh, up the cooperation in a very important area for Armenians' reforms and modernization. Uh, mobility, people-to-people -people contacts, yeah. uh, talking about people. Good governance, rule of law, democracy, fight against corruption, and, and sectorial cooperation. Huh? And I told uh, the President that, uh, you know, there are certain principles we are not going to give up on, and one of the principles is that uh, our partners uh, define the ambitious, our partners uh, define the way they deliver on uh, the values and principles, and uh, we then do our best to match those uh, ambitions uh, through the real actions and support. So actually, well, can I say that it, it was uh, a shock for you? You didn't expect this uh, sudden U-turn, uh, and uh, we now all know that you know, at, at least for the people, it was unexpected when Serzh Sarkisian announced on September 3rd that Armenia will join the customs union. Have you been notified uh, before this announcement that this is going to happen? Was that complete shock or unexpected news for you, or you had some prior knowledge? Let me put it in this way. We have been in the same situation uh, uh, as uh, Armenian people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's another, uh, let's talk about another uh, issue. And, and you, you were talking about Russia, and Armenians did not uh, at all mention, the, you know, and when you talk to Armenian leaders, they would say that there was no pressure from Russia, there was no threat from Russian side, and you will see now the g different government officials will always discuss this, and they will say, no, 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 absolutely not, this was, um, our policy, we were always going to, to be with Russia, and even the foreign minister today that said during the press conference that, you know, we, we can uh, go with uh, our EU partners as deep, as, as much as possible, but not at the expense of uh, our friend, our ally, Russia. Uh, w was this, you know, announcement a little bit uh, surprising for you? I mean, is there anything that is really is in contradiction with no, the no no that announcement was not surprising uh, no, because uh, if you if you say a then uh, once uh, uh, expect you to say also uh, b uh, and if uh, 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 the president of armenia uh, decided uh, uh, to turn armenia in the direction of the customs uh, union uh, uh, we expected that uh, another announcement would follow, sort of clarify uh, or, or define the, 
the framework for the relationship with uh, uh, the European uh, with the European uh, uh, Union. But there was another question, so the, the first one, uh, which I thought uh, uh, deeply while you were asking the, while you were asking the, the second one. The, the, I, I asked the, the foreign minister was saying that yeah the, yeah, yeah the pressure about yeah. the pressure yeah the uh, pressure uh, about yeah, the pressure. I, I, was, I was intrigued yeah. by oh. that word. Uh, um, in in no discussions I have been told uh, uh, by Armenian officials that there was uh, any pressure. Uh, and who am I to question uh, the sincerity uh, of my interlocutors here in Armenia? Uh, do I understand uh, uh, the position of uh, Armenia? Uh, just looking at the map, uh, yes. One understands uh, uh, that uh, the set uh, of uh, the certain aspects and elements uh, the Armenian leaders have to take into account their decision making is is uh, is bigger than compared to, uh, to any of any our other. partners. No? Um, the trust is uh, something. Uh, what is uh, Essential part of the relationship between the European and Armenia. I, I made that. Uh, I made that point, uh, and I said that uh, if there is a trust and confidence, uh, a lot of things you could build uh, uh, yes. on it. Uh, but there is uh, uh, no trust uh, and confidence. Uh, 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 there is no creativity uh, and hardly any willingness uh, uh, to come forward. But these meetings today were about uh, uh, reassuring uh, uh, each other that despite this uh, uh, unexpected uh, uh, decision, there is uh, a space for continuing and indeed, as I said, strengthening the cooperation yes. in a certain uh, areas. And I, and I talked today also to civil society, the national platform, and I m made it very clear that the fact that Armenia uh, turns from the association uh, agreement to customs union does not mean that the European agenda, European values and European principles will disappear. It does not mean that uh, what the civil society have achieved uh, through promoting the European agenda, the, the, the level of uh, of delivering uh, uh, on the fundamental uh, rights uh, that is going to disappear uh, will, will be uh, as strongly presented uh, 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 here in, in Armenia and supporting the civil society uh, uh, and also working with authorities uh, uh, that uh, in that area we do not walk backwards, uh, yes. but we go forward, maybe not as fast uh, and maybe not in such a complex way, but we go forward. But uh, Mr. Fuller, here's the uh, question. You said that actually the, the most part of the association agreement is a DCFTA, so-called deep uh, uh, and comprehensive, comprehensive free, trade uh, yeah, free trade agreement. And now Armenian uh, officials would, you would hear that they will tell, why not, we can go ahead and sign association agreement. So, and it seems to me that you are saying that it's impossible, you cannot separate, uh, you know, DCFTA from association agreement because, yeah. yes, yeah. The, most of the part of this agreement is DCFTA, is that? Uh. Uh, listen, uh, one would expect after three and a half years uh, engaging the partners yes. uh, uh, in the intensive negotiations uh, uh, as uh, we did in the case of Armenia that uh, certain things will be clear uh, to our friends here in Armenia. But I used this opportunity of uh, my today's meeting uh, uh, to uh, reconfirm the following. We have not negotiated two treaties. We have negotiated only one treaty, which has two parts, the political and the trade related and the one which also relates to the regulatory framework, regulatory convergence. Now, both of the parts uh, were actually negotiated by the two different teams, but under one mandate. Mm -hmm. 
and the negotiations has been done in such a way that actually the negotiating teams made a linkages between those parts of this one treaty. It's a one organic treaty. You cannot sort of pick what you want, leave there what you don't want. Uh, I've asked, uh, uh, do you want to renegotiate? The answer was no. So um, we need to find now the way how how, make sure, how to make sure that those three and a half years uh, are not being not forgotten, lost. are not being sort of thrown away, how to build uh, on it. Uh, um, if I look at the relationship with Armenia uh, now uh, being based on the partnership and cooperation uh, uh, agreement, um, it, it's a quite old agreement. Uh, I think our ambitions are now higher uh, than uh, the agreement uh, could uh, offer. The association agreement is not any longer on the table uh, uh, because of Armenians' uh, 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 decision. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, their ambitions and their vision for um, uh, um, another way how to put uh, the relationship uh, up higher, including uh, a new legal framework for our relationship. We definitely ready for that. I, I assured. Uh, the, the president uh, uh, about that. I have enumerated uh, those areas uh, where the work is uh, needed. Uh, you mean you, so at the end of the day, you might have something that could be signed in Vilnius. Is this? Is uh, this? Uh, I, I, I will be cautious an about Vilnius. I will be cautious about Vilnius because uh, we're talking about this association agreement process, uh, which lasted for three and a half yes, years. So. Yes. So this is a serious matter. I'm, yes. I'm not saying that in substitute we will have the treaty Something. of the same magnitude, but, yes. but still, we're talking about serious business. It's, it's about the involvement of the member states, uh, it's about the mandate, it's about the scope of this new agreement. Uh, so if we are able by the Vilnius time sort of to define what we actually want to achieve, uh, I think it would be uh, quite, a, uh, quite a progress. Mr. Fule, if, if for example, Armenia goes to Vilnius and without signing any paper, this will be a huge disappointment for many uh, people in Armenia who are really uh, somehow identified them, themselves as a part of European culture. So, and, and we know that West and Europe is for engagement uh, and because the other alternative is isolation of Armenia. And, we can see even autocratic culture is taking root here, which is not the thing that you would like to see. Am I right on this one? Listen, the engagement uh, uh, is going to be there. Uh, and whether we're going to have something uh, uh, at the summit or not, or not uh, something separate, uh, uh, because there is going to be a final declaration, there is going to be a Armenian yes. delegation sort of participating uh, and negotiating uh, the text of the final declaration, which is always a complex document, not only looking in the past, but even more so in the future. So, so there will definitely be a, a lot which is going to be identified with Armenia, yeah. even under those new uh, uh, conditions, uh, number one. And number two, uh, uh, as I said, uh, we are determined not to give up on, uh, on Armenia and uh, uh, to support uh, uh, the modernization uh, in the country, economic uh, uh, reforms uh, and everything uh, uh, what, uh, what this country uh, uh, within uh, uh, or outside the customs union uh, uh, at the same time get closer uh, to the European Union. Do, do you expect any future surprises, for, for example, before Vilnius su summit? Do you think that some, something more can happen? Uh, are you sure about other partners, for example, Ukraine? We know that the same pressure is now ex being exerted on Moldova, on, uh, for example, on Ukraine. Uh, not so much on Georgia, but at least these two countries are under, especially Ukraine, is under uh, a so, sort of enormous pressure, if you can. And we know that the European Parliament adopted a very uh, critical document on Russia. And you yourself, you, you, in your statement, said that, you know, 
we will not accept, it's not acceptable, uh, for example, one thing is very interesting for us as well, for Armenians, instrumentalization of the conflicts by Russia. And this is, and you're going to stand by, by the partners who are, uh, you know, under the pressure from Russia. And would you please comment on this and how you're going really to stand by, by, by your partners? And is there any way that you can influence Russia to stop doing this? I think we could be clear about what we expect of uh, Russia. Uh, the first is to respect uh, the wish uh, uh, of uh, its neighbors uh, uh, and our partners. And second, uh, and we're calling uh, on Russia already for some time, uh, to engage us with uh, the discussion not only about the relationship of the association agreement and, and customs union, uh, because there is this uh, uh, one element which does, uh, 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 which does not allow the compatibility of these two uh, concepts. Uh, but to talk about uh, the future and the uh, future relations between uh, one integration project, which is there already uh, for decades uh, on the European territory, the European Union, and another integration pro uh, project, uh, Euro-Asian Union, which is uh, in making and, and on the 1st January 2015 probably would become reality. Because this is where I would uh, expect both of us uh, uh, to work uh, very hard to ensure that the basis of our cooperation, the regulatory framework uh, between the two integration projects would be compatible. I am saying very clearly mm. that association agreement are good for our partners and are good for uh, the neighbors of our partners. I am saying clearly that association agreement is substantive and very clear contribution of the European Union member states to the creation in the future of the area of, of free trade between Lisbon and Vladivostok. And uh, another issue... And you, yeah, and, and, and you, are, yeah. you are talking yeah. about uh, standing by uh, yes, that's the very partners important. because I, yeah. I talked about Russia. Uh, but uh, the partners, uh, we assured uh, uh, that uh, if they become uh, uh, the subject of the undue pressure because uh, of their of exercising uh, the free choice, uh, they could count on the solidarity. Solidarity is not uh, an empty word uh, in the European Union, and we are proud uh, on on uh, always delivering uh, uh, on. On this principle. Now, in the case of uh, Moldova, uh, you mentioned uh, the decisions to stop uh, the import uh, of not only wine but some other agriculture products has been taken only a few days ago, only hours ago, and we are already working on the uh, uh, legal uh, decisions within the European Union to increase quota for Moldovan uh, wines export uh, into the European uh, uh, Union. So that could be sort of compensation. That, what they yeah, lose in yeah. Russia, and, they gain in European And we're ready European to look Union. into that. We, we're ready to look into other uh, issues. For example, the provisional applications uh, of uh, the uh, treaty we're going to sign with uh, Ukraine to make it as substantial as possible and to be applied as soon as possible is another thing. I could give you another example. Uh, uh, if we are able to initial those important uh, association agreement with Moldova and Georgia, the Vilnius uh, summit, uh, then the Commission made it very clear that they will do utmost uh, uh, in way of legal preparation, translation, uh, 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 of those documents uh, uh, to be signed uh, before the end of the term of the duty of this commission. Mm -hmm. and, and this is important because uh, um, 
whether I like it or not, uh, it's not a question, unfortunately, within the European Union, uh, the time to prepare these kind of uh, documents uh, for uh, signing takes uh, 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 much more time than one would uh, uh, wish to see. But in the case of those two countries, we're ready to do uh, our utmost, almost impossible, to deliver on uh, signing them as soon as possible. Uh, another issue about Armenia again, coming back to Armenia again, uh, some critics who are pro-European here even, uh, they would uh, say that you didn't do enough to uh, instill the courage uh, to the Armenian uh, uh, leaders that they can withstand Russian pressure. That, uh, you know, the same, you perhaps you were more supportive to the other partners than to Armenia. So this is you would hear these kind of uh, comments these days. What's your answer to these critics? We do not uh, uh, approach our partners differently. We don't have a favorite group uh, and the less favorite group. Uh, uh, that is absolutely nonsense. Uh, we have approached uh, uh, um, all of them, and the, on one side, in the same way, uh, offering them this possibility of signing the association agreement, and then, as a result, uh, having a political association and economic integration with the European Union. And at the same time, in those negotiations, of course, we uh, took into advantage the specificities uh, of each and every uh, country. Uh, so we have done uh, everything possible to uh, make uh, uh, this uh, goal attractive uh, for uh, Armenia, for its people and uh, authorities. But so uh, what, is, what is important yes. at the end, uh, uh, again and again let me make this uh, point, that uh, the country must be free to make their own uh, uh, choice. Uh, and I. And I don't think that the European Union should be in the business uh, of uh, influencing uh, this choice. We should be in a different business. And this is something I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. We should be in the business that uh, uh, our partners, by the time, are more and more free to make the choice uh, 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 on their own like that uh, they would have to less and less pay attention to other Outside external factors. Pressure, yeah. That the domestic uh, uh, situation and even more so the national interest would play uh, uh, the role and not the interest uh, of someone of else. Other, third and this is the business in which uh, we should be this is uh, the, the, the business in which we will be, but not in influencing uh, our partners uh, what to do uh, uh, and how to do it. I cannot really you know, uh, ignore this question, so I have to ask about Nagorno-Karabakh, because Europe is very, very important part of this negotiation process. Uh, as a you know, co-chair of Minsk Group France, for example, is sort of outsourcing your uh, participation in this process. And, but I think maybe it wasn't done enough. Uh, for example, in your statement you say that we will not really, it's not acceptable for us if we see withdrawal of security guarantees you know, from our partner countries. And you're referring, for example, maybe to Russia who might indicate our Armenian uh, ally that, you know, they will not get the support as they were getting before. So maybe you, you didn't do enough for in, in this negotiation process, negotiating process in Nagorno-Karabakh. Maybe you should have done more, more. What do you think? Uh, is there any way that Europe can become like direct uh, uh, part of this process, peace process in Nagorno-Karabakh? or it, influence at least. It, it could but hardly be at the expense of the current framework uh, and it could hardly be uh, if there is no uh, uh, consent uh, of the parties uh, of the parties involved. Uh, 
uh, the men's group is well established framework for addressing uh, uh, this uh, uh, overdue uh, uh, serious problem in the South Caucasus. And uh, while we could uh, stay aside and and lament that uh, uh, we are, have no bigger role to play as far as the being directly involved. Uh, um, uh, and France, uh, a French representative represents uh, uh, France uh, and not the European uh, uh, Union. But we're not doing that. Uh, uh, we have uh, the special representative who is uh, uh, doing his best with the co-chairman and mm -hmm. also with the authorities in Yerevan and, and Baku to create a, a, a better conditions uh, for uh, achieving a solution, number one. Number two, we have uh, started to invest uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, two, three years a lot in the confidence building measures. Yeah. So also on the ground, uh, uh, we're preparing uh, for, um, um, uh, for the solution, um, uh, which we hope uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is to come. Whenever there is going to be a space for us to do more, will be the first one uh, uh, to use it uh, uh, and uh, we will deliver uh, um, on it because uh, there could uh, hardly be uh, uh, stability in our neighborhood uh, uh, if we have the protected uh, conflict uh, 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 to remain uh, uh, protracted and not solved. Now, uh, coming to the issue of uh, this uh, DCFT agreement, some uh, po politicians here announced that there were some provision there which would, uh, for example, envisage, uh, you know, building a custom points between Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Is there anything, really, something close to this or if if it's not secret, because there it's it's being uh, you know widely quoted, and anyone who has uh, uh, some issues concerning what is in the text or not in the text, uh, 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 put the text on the table. Okay, number one. Number two, we have been always uh, very very tentative through our political offer, economic trade, investment mm -hmm. offer, to create more opportunities to involve to, uh, the people in those territories uh, and to create uh, a more conducive uh, environment mm -hmm. for solving the problem. We have been always careful not to create uh, directly or even indirectly any additional artificial obstacles which would actually make the solution more difficult. That's not the aim. Uh, whether we're talking about uh, uh, Armenia, whether we're talking about Georgia, whether we're talking about Moldova, that has always been uh, a very important uh, uh, preconditions of, of, of our approach to the text of this association agreement. If I may ask the question about Turkey, Armenia, Turkish Armenian mm -hmm. borders, and uh, as we know, uh, the borders are closed, and the president even made a remark about even some critical, maybe uh, addressed to you that you know before negotiating the association agreement, I mean you should convince Turkey to open its borders with Armenia. I think Turkey is also, right, the association uh, has some sort of, uh, you know, cooperation agreement with the European Union. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, first, l let me uh, make it absolutely clear yeah. that uh, from the very beginning we have uh, supported uh, a bold uh, Armenian initiatives uh, yes. on opening the borders. Uh, um, and uh, that support, it is still there, and we uh, do not miss an opportunity to call on uh, the Turkish uh, uh, colleagues uh, to work uh, uh, together uh, with uh, uh, Yerevan to normalize uh, uh, the relationship, number one. Number two, when I was here last time in July, actually a lot of time we have devoted uh, to uh, 
implications uh, uh, of the association agreement uh, in the regional context. We have a customs union with Turkey, the European Union. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever the European Union negotiates free trade agreement, uh, because of this custom of a union, uh, one expects uh, uh, Turkey to negotiate uh, the same or similar free trade agreement also with that partner. Huh? Uh, so we have discussed actually how to use this association agreement uh, 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 in, uh, in opening that door uh, for engagement uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, between Turkey uh, and uh, Armenia. Uh, but now we will probably never see whether it would work uh, uh, or not. Uh, yeah. And two questions about, one is about the opening in Belarus. Do you see any opening in Belarus, for example, uh, as it's uh, also a member of Eastern Partnership, but it's, uh, that we know that there are a lot of political problems, and today we heard from Belarus foreign minister some critical remarks saying that it's not a, it should not be a political project, it should be a pragmatic project, he said something like that. But at least he was sitting, you know, uh, with these six foreign ministers. And uh, do you think it's a good thing? It's a beginning of something, or? Well, let me put it this way. First, if you would ask me, do you want to see a progress? Uh, yes. the, the, the answer would be very clear. Uh, yes, I do want to see a progress. Now, whether uh, I, I, I see uh, a chance for the progress, uh, uh, there are a certain signals. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. The foreign minister, Mackay, presence here uh, uh, has been actually a good thing. I have to say that uh, he made a constructive contribution um, uh, to our discussion uh, on Eastern uh, uh, partnership, uh, and I think that uh, continuing engagement uh, uh, with him uh, uh, is important uh, for the European Union uh, and uh, uh, Belarus. Uh, and I see also uh, um, a good discussion on the dialogue for modernization and the possibility of authorities uh, uh, to take uh, a, a part together with uh, the civil society representative in this very important uh, dialogue uh, on modernizing Belarus with the assistance of the European Union. But the ultimate uh, uh, issue is the fate of political prisoners. Uh, uh, whatever opening there might be uh, in our relationship with Belarus, uh, uh, depends uh, on releasing and rehabilitating uh, uh, political prisoners. And that's a very clear uh, uh, policy and I, of the European Union, and I hope very much that uh, these signals I was talking about, this forthcoming Vilnius yeah. summit, uh, uh, um, it would be not a missed opportunity. Mm for uh, Belarus because uh, if they want any message uh, from uh, uh, me, here it is. You move from the political prisoners, uh, we then move uh, uh, on uh, the full-scale programs uh, uh, um, of cooperating uh, uh, with your country with the uh, aim to modernize it. And the other question about Azerbaijan. We know that there, there will be elections in Azerbaijan, presidential elections. What do you have to say about uh, the situation there? Uh, as we know, some um, there are also prisoners there, and uh, freedom of speech is not really uh, uh, on the scale that you would like to see. And, and there are a lot of issues in terms of building democratic institutions, and as a member of the Eastern Partnership, uh, are you talking with the current uh, government president about these issues? And what do you expect from these presidential elections in uh, terms of being free and fair? 
I can I can assure you that our dialogue uh, with uh, Azerbaijan is much more complex than only oil, oil, and oil. And I'm not uh, 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 in any way dismissing the important role Azerbaijan uh, is, is is playing uh, in the energy policy of the European Union. Something we appreciate uh, very much. By the same time, we're making it, it very clear that uh, us moving in the, in the direction of making uh, uh, our partnership more strategic, that movement uh, should be not only in some areas, but should be uh, uh, in all areas, including the one on fundamental rights, uh, uh, um, uh, human rights and uh, democracy. And that's what uh, we expect from uh, the forthcoming presidential elections. We expect them to be free and fair. We expect them to be better than the last uh, uh, elections. Uh, you're right that uh, uh, that expectation is not necessarily being matched by seeing uh, the political space being rather closed uh, 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 um, uh, and not being opened up, you would expect before the elections uh, uh, um, uh, other voices being heard. Uh, uh, you would expect uh, they will be given the opportunity um, uh, to make uh, uh, their case. The fact that one of the presidential candidates uh, is in detention, is, is in, in, in prison, does not uh, help to alleviate uh, those uh, those concerns. Thank you very much, Mr. Fule. So we appreciate that you found the time for us and came to talk to us. Thank you very much. It has been my pleasure as always. Thank you very much. <laughs>